Morning guys, out here nice and early, Scott Matthews building the 750 Cruiser here at um, La Trobe Valley. For those who don't know, about an hour and a half east of Melbourne, Australia. Uh, things are going well, worked on the firewall forward. Um, hope you enjoy this video, try to keep them relatively short. Try to go through the highs and lows I guess of building. Got a bit frustrated there for a while but when things finally work, um, it's usually my problem. Um, once I've solved it, um, I can move on. Enjoy this video. Yes, finally, got it working. All right. Got my MGL updated in the radio. More computers, paperwork, got a hand for my daughter, wiring diagrams, heaps of notes, including plug a headset in. What else we got? All my leads, change all my leads. The MGL information pack. End of the day, it was just a firmware update. My ethos happens to be 2017. Today is uh, at, I don't know, 15th of January 2020. And it's been the best part of a week trying to get my radio working. So anyone out there, do your firmware updates. It'll save you a lot of time. Okay, just powering through it today. Um, what have we done? Got the volume re regulator fitted, ran the carby, uh, the choke cable, and also the throttle cable. The throttle cable, I'm not, not a, overly happy with the connection to the carby, so I might manufacture my own, but that took a while, but they're all hooked up. Also, a shout out to one of my mates, put the call out um, over in Perth, you know who you are. So he sent me over some um, couple of metres of four gauge wire from the start of my start So the Zenith family's working well. All right, fuel system. So I'm a bit of a visual guy. Got the cruiser over there. This represents the firewall, if you like. And I've just drawn what I need. So the parts I have got, fuel filter to my fuel pump, working out my elbows, um, the right threads. So I've got three eight hose all the way to the pump, filtered before the pump, and then uh, the Jabiru next size down from 3A, I'm not sure what that is, 10mm, well, it's obviously Imperial. Uh, fuel hose that'll run up to the carby. I've got a bunch of leftover bits here, but now I just make a shopping list. I use speed flow to get the nice anodized fittings. I want to get this right because these guys aren't cheap. And also um, consideration as well. With the 90s, if I get these nice fittings that spin, you don't have to worry so much about the orientation. With the MPT ones, as you're probably aware, like these fellas, you screw it in um, and it might stop. You know, it's hard to get the right uh, orientation. There's a bit of a skill to that. You only get one, one or two goes at it. And then you can sort of, yeah, you know, if you want it sitting that way, it might be only sort of, and then that's where it needs to go, where realistically tight is another quarter turn. So I'll try and get those sort of fittings. That's where we're at. Nice visual on the fuel system. I'm just uh, finalising my fuel system. Um, Probably do a better job of this than me, but you can see all the attempts, not the attempts, but just the change of, I don't know, all those parts there are just extras now um, that I've accumulated, I guess. Um, that also started with the fuel tanks. So now I'm just working out, got my AN6 fittings. This is 1.8 MPT, the facet fuel pump. Change it to AN6 with an adapter. 90 degrees, I'll make up my hose, get these as close as I can. Clearly mark the flow just for now, so I understand it in my head. Uh, bulkhead fitting, just waiting on some nice washers to go through the bulkhead. 
I think I need another, yeah, another 90 degree that I've omitted. Um, just makes things nicer. I'm going to change this for a 45, just to suit my firewall. So this will be up here somewhere um, on, in relation to the firewall. So rather than have a bend in the hose, um, I might as well just get a nice 45 degree to go on there. And then I'll mount these. Space is a bit tight and you've got to think about servicing the filter. The filter will come out every 100 hours and get flushed out. Um, the facet fuel pump, you know, they recommend horizontal, vertical, well, I think 45, 45 up is the um, preferred way. But my OCD, I sort of, I played around. I can mount this 45 on the firewall, but my OCD kicks in and I just, I've got to have it square. So that's how she'll go. Got my good um, local guys here call it Gatorade, I think it's Barricade fuel hose, SAE 30 R14. Um, two, two meters of that's about $70 Australian. And my fire hose sleeves, uh, one of my mates put me onto that at Speedflow. So I'm getting all my parts from Speedflow. All right, so out here nice and early, it's about 6.30 in the morning. But you gotta do what you gotta do to get, get out here. What I am finding is it's a bit harder to um, just duck out to the hangar and do some work. So today, um, still working on the wiring, firewall forward. Got a big earth lead to manufacture for the um, starter motor, which will also earth the engine. Um, running some leads. Got a, got a swifty little tool there that I'm going to play with the um, RG58, the coax cable. We'll run the cable. It'll pretty much finish inside here and we can roll this skin down. Um, obviously I'll get someone else to inspect in there first. Um, Got a concern with the throttle, just trying to work out the actual connection of the throttle to the carby. Got to play with that, but yeah, see how we get done today. Okay, just why I um, just why I had my first cup of coffee. The got my coax. I got this little tool off Amazon, which is fantastic. It's like a I call it the little circumcision tool. Whizzes around and um, it cuts the wire so that it looks like that um, for, the, for the BNC connectors. This is all part of aircraft building and you'll learn all this stuff. And I bought the um, BNC uh, crimpers as well. So we'll go ahead and make up a cable. All right, so getting in the groove of the, the wiring. I'm probably gonna send the, the P-clamp or a Dell clamp company broke. But um, yeah, just working through it, getting all those I don't know, the jobs that have been stacked up and put off, but uh, going well. Just done some looming at the front here, got the starter motor wired up, all secured. I'm using the big L, bigger Dell clamps, I'll go through at the end. There's always something, you run, you run a cable and tighten it up thinking it's the last time, but there's always something you forget to run through. So I'm just going through, putting the oversized Dell clamps on there at the moment, running all my looms. Um, one thing I have noticed, once again, back on the MGL system, so the MGL EFIS, you hook up, um, what have I got, oil temperature, oil temperature at the bottom, oil pressure up the top, um, and the TACO. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure the TACO, the one that we use for the jab engine, the mag magnetic pickup, um, is not going to talk to the EFIS. So I had to come up with some other system, either off the Maggie's, off the alternator, or a, what is it, a Hall effect sensor. Um, and the same goes for the pressure. The pressure and the temperature for the oil should be okay. However, it gets very convoluted. Um, you need to tell, firstly, you need to tell the EFIS what sensor you got. I don't know. You know, whether it's 0.5 volt to 4 volts or is it 0 to 5 volts or 0 to 10 volts. Um, so you've got to do some research, find out what sensors are fitted to the engine. Select it correctly on the, um, on the EFIS. Then it plugs into the RDAC. Um, and the ardac has got little uh, uh, PU switches, which are either on or off. I think that delivers 5 volts. Um, more reading, more frustration. Um, we'll get there in the end, but yeah, it's just um, a bit clunky at the moment. And a lot of time, with not much to show for it. But anyway, we'll get there and get something done tonight. Alright, so a BNC connector worked. It's fitted to the radio. 
plenty of slack. I'm going to pop out this rivet here, another P-clamp. Um, a thing to note, I'll show you on the other side. I've got the coax. It actually clicks in between the riv rivet tails coming through the skin and rivet tails coming down. So I've clicked that in nicely and it stays there really well. Um, then a bit of spy wrap. Now that spy wrap stuff's really good. Well, it's not spy wrap, what do you call it? Um, conduit. The black flexible conduit. Um, I'll show you what I've done underneath. Alright, so in the hell hole, I've just put a bit of that conduit in the longeron, same as I did on the opposite side for the aileron trim, elevator trim. You can see the conduit there, that's quarter inch or seven mil. Um, and it just snaps in, and now you can actually, once I thread the aerial through, you can see that just slides along and it's going to go through that hole, through this uh, bracket here, and then the aerial will go, go up to the roof. So that's got to be the best way to run your cable, guys. So, yeah, just 7mm conduit, clicks in, made to fit, perfect. Alright, so I feel like I um, achieved a bit more. So sometimes I guess if you get, the, the point I learned there is if you get frustrated with things, move on to something else, just do an easier job. So I've just been through, tidied up all the Adele clamps. Um, I've fitted the... Um, Mag pickup, the tac taco sender, if you like. Fitted that properly. I'm a bit dubious as to whether that's going to actually work. I think I need a Hall effect sensor, or you can run the P lead off the Maggies. Um, so, a bit of research on that. What did I do? Um, ran the wires for the, or the aerial for the radio. I'll show you that. So, this is my coax plugged into the radio, the BNC connector that I made. Um, down, took a rivet out. I don't like adding extra holes, obviously, if you don't need to, so I can't see any re any issue with removing a rivet and upsizing the hole slightly. Um, what's that, 3 16 hole from a 5 mil hole. Um, the bolt's probably stronger, and just put a, uh, um, a Dell clamp on there. Consideration there as well is when the skin's on, can I get the bolt out in future? Uh, I guess I can. If not, the bolt can stay there. I can get the nut off, get a spanner in there when this skin's rolled over the top. A um, bit of slack there in case I need to re-terminate the end and run that down. Um, just another thing I guess for those who are maybe not up to this stage, but obviously these covers still come off. Everything else is riveted in um, and I managed to, just with strings and mirrors, um, you can see there's the aerial there and I got it through into the longer on there um, and for those who know the cruiser there's like a big void under that part with another bulkhead you have to get through um, but I managed with wire a bit of fishing around but you can do it there's plenty of access so don't a lot of people hold off on doing this for till the end basically but my advice rivet it down boys just suck it up and get it done Always got the paperwork out to refer to everything. Got my electrical stuff, the folder I made up, all my MGL type stuff, um, installation manuals, etc. are in there. And the cruiser, um, every rivet's in there, and then what to do, how to build it. But I also found the Jabiru USA firewall forward for fitting that to that. So the Jabiru 3300 to a cruiser or a 750. Um, so I'm just working through that. There's some great uh, tips in there, I guess. But now we're on to the... Uh, I'm going to fit the oil cooler. main reason I want to fit the oil cooler is... The engine's been sitting for a while now. It's all inhibited. A brand new engine. I fill it full of uh, running oil. I've got some over there. Total aero, 100. It's the uh, running oil that I use. So I'll top it up with that. Um, I put one bottle in. Obviously I don't want to fill the sump. So I've got open connections here. Oil cooler will go on. And then I can spin the engine over. I've contacted Jabiru. Yes, I can spin the engine over without a prop. Um, there's no issues there. But you can't, don't run it without a prop. So I've got no fuel. Got no tanks, got no wings, um, <laughs> got no fuel filter, fuel pump, 
and here's the last little red dog in here who tells me that I've got no fuel, no fuel line. So if it starts I'd be very surprised. So I'll just give you a look as well at my, that's my mag pickup in there, taco sender, various names. It just grabs a little tag twice per rev I think as it goes round. Uh, this wiring will get cleaned up. What I found handy was just put an oversized peak lamp, run the wires through, same as I've done over here, cut them the length. I've left, left these, these are all labelled, these are all my sensors going to the RDAC now. So until such time as I, I just want to get signs of life. Um, if I turn it on at the moment, Once the camera focuses, this will come alive in a minute. So you can see I've got zero oil temp and zero PSI. So zero PSI is good. I'd, I'd like to think that would read, I don't know, it's probably 18, 20 degrees in the hangar here at the moment. Um, and I don't know if my RPM is going to work. So I'm looking to get signs of life out of those three. I can change the setting. And that'll read like 60 degrees or it'll read um, 200 degrees. And same as the PSI, if I tell it it's got a different sender, you know, it can read up to 80 PSI or something just sitting here now. So a bit more research on the MGL. Just working on the firewall here. Uh, I nearly had a gotcha with these. So I've got my choke and throttle cable. It's going to put my fuel line here somewhere. Just have to take into account nearly forgot about these slide plates luckily it's submerged enough or below that top line so that when the landing gear bottoms out if I have a heavy landing um, this plate slides up but it only pops out about a quarter of an inch um, so it doesn't guillotine the main fuel line just another consideration got to think ahead working through the wiring um, just trying not to get too tied up in the weeds if you like. All I want to do is get the wiring on, um, test things, signs of life and move on. So I had a bit of an issue there um, obviously with the radio, resolve that. I don't know how to use the radio or program the radio but it, it now works. Um, I've got signs of life there. So I've moved on, I've just wired up the engine. Um, oil pressure and oil temp. Bit of fault finding there. I had readings of zero, which doesn't tell me that it's actually working. Um, it's probably 20 degrees in the hangar at the moment. G'day to all my Americans that are uh, freezing over there. Got the t-shirt on and got jeans on today, but usually shorts. Um, so it's nice and relatively warm. It's about nine o'clock at night. Um, oil pressure and oil temperature. Couldn't make much sense out of it. You select all the different types. I could have zero, 180 degrees, 220 degrees, and minus 70 degrees. Um, lo and behold, I had temp and pressure in the wrong slots on the RDAC. So, apologies to MGL on that one. There may have been a few curse words said along the way. Got that sorted out. It's now reading 20 degrees. I heated it up with my heat gun. Went up to about 28 degrees. Now it's cooled down. Fantastic. I did want to put oil in the engine, um, then I can test my starter motor wiring and also in doing that, um, the, I want to get RPM, you know, the starter motor will crank it um, above 300 RPM so I should get a nice RPM signal. So I put oil in the engine, however to do that I need to put an oil cooler on, obviously I'm going to get oil pressure as well so I can test that system. and my dodgy little uh, battery isolation switch which is only like a number number 16 wire through a switch if I hit the starter motor um, that'll just fry that whatever I don't know what's the starter motor pull 50 amps 200 amps I don't know pulls a lot anyway um, so that's where we're at at the moment um, moving on going ahead move on to the oil cooler and finish off a bit of wiring then we'll move on to the, the windscreen, cows, doors, windows. Um, going well. Thanks for watching.